Personality is the study of who we are. It's composed of many theories about how and why we behave as we do. Ultimately, I think you should create your own theory of personality, but before you do, it's wise to see what others have said on the subject. The theories are presented in semi-chronological order, but you'll soon discover that ideas are not limited to one period of time. They pop up, are popular for a while, subside and vanish, but these same ideas will appear again years, decades, or centuries later. One of the earliest explanations of personality is trait theory. It suggests that your personality is the result of some external force. Life was thought to be under the control of the fates and gods. The Egyptians believed that one of their gods would say a word, and the thing would then exist. The power is in the name itself. They believed that existence and names are intertwined. You will live as long as your name is spoken, but when people stop saying your name, your existence is wiped out. Parents carefully chose a name lest they tempt the fates. Consequently, naming a baby sloth would be unacceptable, while naming a child brave or mercy would produce a person that held that trait. Naming a girl beautiful woman would result in her becoming beautiful. Names were both descriptive and predictive. In a related practice, your name would be converted into numbers, and those numbers were lucky or unlucky for you. This belief in numerology was often tied to solar or lunar cycles. As the sun crosses the sky in its yearly orbit, it would pass various constellations. The moon and planets were also part of the zodiac system, and altogether these lights guided, influenced, and determined our destiny. The Chinese developed their zodiac about 3,500 years ago. It incorporated five planets, the months, and later on the tide. This 60-year cycle explained what you are like, who to marry, and what will happen in the future. Your outer animal is determined by the year in which you are born. The 12 animal signs are rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, or goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig, or boar. The animal for your year of birth indicates how others view you. But how the others see you is also moderated by the location of five major planets, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, and Saturn. Each planet has a corresponding element, gold, wood, water, fire, and earth, which influences your animal sign. In combination with the 12 years, there are 60 years in a full cycle. The last full cycle began in 1984, and the next one begins in 2044. And it's actually more complicated than that. Each animal is also a sign of the month of the year. January is the rat, February is the ox, etc. Animal of your birth month indicates how you are inside or wish to be. In addition to this inner animal, the two-hour block of time in which you were born is your secret animal. So altogether, five elements, 12 years, 12 months, and 12 periods of the day give 8,640 possible combinations. My outer animal is ox, my inner animal is the tiger, but my secret animal is the dragon. And yet there is more. Did I mention that the Chinese zodiac calendar is lunar? It doesn't start with January 1st, it starts with Chinese New Year's Day, which varies from year to year. So even though you're born in January, you might not be born under the sign of the rat. You could be a pig. And don't forget the yin-yang cycle as well. Odd years are yin, and even years are yang. This is a very complicated system designed to take into account the complexities of human personality, and yet tie it to the stability of the universe. About the time of Confucius, Hippocrates was explaining to the Greeks that personality types, humors, were based on four essential body fluids. A balance of the four fluids, yellow bile, phlegm, black bile, and blood, kept one in good humor. A bit too much blood, sanguine, makes one confident and brave. Too much makes someone arrogant, impulsive, and unpredictable. A bit phlegmatic makes one easygoing. Too much makes one sluggish and lazy. A bit of yellow bile, choleric, gives one energy and passion. Too much makes one aggressive and bad-tempered. Being a bit melancholic makes one sensitive and poetic. Too much drowns you in depression. Ancient approaches often emphasized temperament over character. Temperament was thought to be the built-in characteristic a person has. You might have a generally sad person, melancholy, or happy, sanguine. This temperament doesn't mean you can't be honest, character, but describes your general bent. If you're a morning person, it's the result of temperament. 
if you go to an early morning class, even though you are a late night person, it's a reflection of your character.